So now that I've got the rivet press up and running, I find myself with the need to be able to punch holes in material so they can be riveted together. I looked at uh, a few used options online, but I just couldn't find what I was looking for. So I decided to go ahead and make a hole punch fixture. And that's what we're doing here. The holes that I've put into this piece, their intended use will become apparent as the video progresses. And as you'll see, I uh, broke off a drill bit in one of those small holes. So uh, when the drill bit broke, got hot, and work hardened the piece, so the hole couldn't go all the way through, which you'll see shortly. Fortunately, it was a, a pinhole and not a hole that had to be threaded. And there's that hole right there. It's disappointing, but fortunately, since it was the pinhole, it's I didn't have to scrap the part. So here's the two major pieces. Got to put a few holes to mount this and also have to add a piece on that front end for the punch to go through. The stock was only three quarter inch wide and the punch that I have is five eighths in diameter. So as much as I would have liked that to have been one piece, I just didn't feel comfortable with that little amount of clearance. So I added this piece of one inch um, bar stock on the end. That'll give, me, that'll give me some room for not only the punch but also the um, bronze guides that'll go in there. piece that I'm making here will bolt to the top of the punch and will act as a, both a spacer and a, I don't know, I don't know what it would be called, but it's a spacer and it's a place for the, the spring to sit to help the punch uh, return to its height when it's done. You'll see. So here's most of the components. Uh, first thing I gotta do is press this bar in here. And now 
now I can assemble. I'm using pins because I wanted to make sure the alignment uh, was accurate with the not much play in the punch and die. And just using the bolts wouldn't have gotten me as close as I needed to be. So this bar I'm putting on here is a guide. That's why there's multiple holes under it so I can adjust it. Uh, quarter inch adjustments. And the uh, that other part you saw me making ended out having some bad dimensions so I had to crank out another one. Bushings here, the fit was a little looser than I wanted so just put a little super glue on there. Hopefully it'll hold up over time. So that's the general idea, but I need a, a guide over here. And that's what I'm doing here. Sorry about the camera. When you uh, get the camera too close and you're running a lot of coolant, it tends to make a mess. So that's the part. Now I just need a hole in this edge here for it to ride on that rod. You'll see in a second here I'm using a boring head, which seems odd on a CNC mill, but I just I didn't have an end mill small enough and rigid enough to go the depth without uh, without tapering that hole slightly, and I need. It need it to be a pretty accurate uh, dimension. So here's all the rest of the components. You see I made a, a few more steel pins and some collars here. I caught the footage on video. Oh and here's a spring. I had to get rid of that wimpy spring and get a, a real die spring. But I had to turn the inside a little bit. And I changed this bar to add a ledge and that'll act as a stripper to hold the part down but the uh, the footage on these lathe parts it just it wasn't very exciting and the video itself was pretty bad even by my standards so that spacer part you saw me putting in there uh, the first part that went on the rod I can add a different depth spacer which will make the whole uh, rocker arm there uh, move from side to side depending on the width of the spacer and that will set my distance between my holes and uh, you can see that rod in the back there the initial idea was that I would punch the hole and then the punch itself would lift up the spacer just to automate it a little but as you can see as it rocks it pushes the part and uh, I don't know I'm just not comfortable with that so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it by hand instead of having it automatic but here it is let's, uh, let's try it out No dimples in the material, nice clean holes punched equidistant from each other, 
No burrs on the back. Exactly what you'd expect. Well, that's pretty much the project. Now I can now I can move on with a few other things I need to make where this was going to play a key role. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.